Hi everyone, welcome to Corgi Jungle. Hello. Hello guys, welcome. Hello. Hi, thank you for having us over for a plant tour. You know how many times I mentioned Caesar and Corgi Jungle in all of my videos? Corgi Jungle. No, Corgi Jungle. Corgi Jungle. Corgi Jungle. Corgi Jungle. Hi, my name is Dennis from Corgi Jungle. And I'm Caesar, also from Corgi Jungle. And this is uh, Peach, who is uh, also from Corgi Jungle, and an uh, inspiration uh, to create the social media, and not just Peach, but also our plants. So we live in Brooklyn, New York, in a one-bedroom apartment. Uh, we've been living here for about eight months. We enjoy this place a bit more because it's a little smaller, but it's more cozy, it's more homey. So we named it Corgi Jungle because of our little corgi here and our jungle of plants. But we also like to, uh, you know, include how plants are a stepping stone to sustainability and how uh, everybody treasures their plants at home. This is our living room. Um, we could start in this corner here. This is okay. So I think last year we imported this one, right? Yeah, this is the golden dragon. Yes. That we imported together. Yes, and we split it. We got I got the bottom cutting, and you got the the two top cuttings, right? Oh, did I? I, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I see yeah. new growth in it already. Yeah, it's finally. It took a very long time, and within the past month, it started growing a new sprout. Oh, nice. Mine is not as big as yours, actually. I have a new leaf. But mine's like super fat and chubby. I don't know if this one will do the same thing. Maybe it's because of the roots. Maybe. Because this, this had a lot of roots when it came in. Gotcha, okay. And it didn't rot like the other one, so. Right. And here is a Monstera. Monstera, yeah. Is it a young yeah. one? This is a young Monstera Deliciosa. It got its first menstruation. Oh, nice. It's, <laughs> it's growing up. Yeah, it's growing. We actually had another one, but it, 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 it had root rot. Okay. So this is the replacement. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's doing well. Yeah, it's doing well. This one is doing a lot better than the other one. The so ZZ Raven? I bought this almost like two years ago and like it's had no new leaves whatsoever. And I now think it still has no leaves? Yeah, I think it's because it was a cutting and I think it takes oh. longer for new growth to come out of cuttings. And then this is the begonia you recently got, right? Not recently. No, I think I got this ago. as a cutting. I'm not 100% sure the name of this one. Uh-huh. But, you know, I was really scared of getting begonias because everybody says that they're very hard to take care of. Right, that's why I haven't had a begonia in my collection and yet These are either. so easy to take care of. Really? This one is so easy. I water it almost like once a month. <laughs> once a month? Yes, because it's in sphagnum moss. It's like a mixture of sphagnum moss bark and perlite. perlite? Yeah, and some perlite in there. And you only water it once a month? Yeah, like I water it when the leaves start to droop down. Oh wow. So right now, like the moss is dry. Right. But the leaves are still firm. So I So I'll, you don't water so it. So I, I don't water until the leaves wilt. Gotcha. Yeah. And there's already new growth going on it too, right here. Yes. Wow. I, I actually got this as like a, a pretty small cutting. And then from the cutting, I think it was this one, I cut it and then I rooted mm -hmm. two cuttings from that. So this is the parent plant, and I already propagated two of them. Wow. Yeah. This one actually has a really nice texture to it too. I didn't know begonias have this like spiky yeah. dots on it. Is that what? It kind of feels like a, like a, like a Velcro here. Yeah, it yeah. feels very interesting. I didn't know begonias had that. Yeah, and the underside is beautiful, right. it's red. And it's shiny on it's top, shiny, like what yeah. can you ask for? Yeah. So this is very easy to take care of. So the one in here is, um, what is this called? A red arrow syngonium. Oh, syngonium. Yes. This is, I think, the only syngonium I have. When I bought it, it had two leaves, and those two leaves dropped immediately. I think it's because of the shock of shipping. Did you import this, or was it? No, 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 it was, a, it was, I think they imported from New Orleans. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it was domestic, but I think just the shock of it being in a being box. Being transported yeah. and being so small and getting transported yeah. probably put it in shock too. But since then, it's, it's grown to be, so. Right, and you keep it in the humidity uh, terrarium dome? Yeah, I just recently put it in there just 
so I won't have to water it as often. <laughs> <laughs> and this is new. I didn't see this the last time I was here. Yeah, um, last winter this was on nonstop. The, the heater was the, the, on? <laughs> the, the heater was on nonstop and I had a lot of pepperonis here. Uh -huh. And it killed all of them oh, within no. like a few weeks and I didn't even notice because it kind of turns on by itself. By itself. So I was walking around through the neighborhood and I found a, a some like a very slender piece of plywood and I'm like okay I'm gonna take this home and I'm gonna build out a shelf so right. I can cover the heat that's rising up from and the did heater. And did it help a lot with your pepperonias? Well the pepperonias mostly all died <laughs> so ho hopefully this is future proof for next winter. I'm originally from Mexico and I lived in the countryside uh, in a farm and then when I moved here there wasn't that much greenery there was a lot of concrete and buildings I always missed that aspect of, of living so when I moved out of my parents house Dennis bought me my first plant the small little succulent and then from there it kind of escalated and here I see how like a really nice design with all these hanging planters yeah so I, I used to have them on the windowsill but then I'm like Okay, so I ran out of space on the windowsill, but we have a lot of these uh, planes that are not being used. Right, and they're really deep too, so you can put yeah. like multiple planters on it at once. I like this idea, and you use a lot of, you plant a lot of Hoyas in here as well. Yeah, since this is a southeast, they get a lot of strong light. So a lot of the plants that can resist the, the light are in this window. So these are all the Hoyas that you have living here? Yeah, so hopefully a lot of them get sun stressed. Mm -hmm. Like this one, the new growth is a little sun stressed. Ooh, but it has like these pink rims on it. Yeah. Is this the one I gave you? Yes, this, this is. I think you Yay. I think you gave us this with two leaves. Two leaves yeah. only and it's already growing. Yeah, it's already growing. Yeah. The two carry eyes here. So when we first moved in, I was like, okay, we have a, a lot of windows, it's south exposure, great lighting, mm -hmm. so Perfect immediately, immediately, I put them in the in, in the windows. So of course, they got burnt. <laughs> oh no! Because yeah. you just moved here recently. Yeah, I, I moved here within the year, so. Right, and you had less lighting in your old apartment. Yeah, the other apartment was basically a cave. <laughs> it was a cave. <laughs> yeah, it was basically a cave. <laughs> so you had like a lot of grow lights and stuff. In yeah, there? we had a lot of grow lights, and we only had one window in the bedroom that had, I think, east exposure. Okay, so it wasn't like direct sunlight. It wasn't that you direct. Have no. Here. no. So when they came here, it like went into shock. It went into shock and it burned it. Cause it, I think also I sprayed them down with neem oil before. Uh, so the neem oil plus the sun. It was just cooking. It was just, <laughs> it was a disaster. But I think it's healing pretty well. Is this like new growth? This is new growth, yeah. So it is growth. healing, it just yeah. takes time. It's just the three lower leaves that are mm -hmm. not doing so well, but. So this is the Hindi rope. I think this is a cutting you gave me too. Really? It's so much more. No, no, no. I think you, you okay. gave us this one. Right, the tiny one. And then uh, we found this in Union Square, of course. First deal. Uh, so we just added this to the cutting you gave us. Nice. Yeah. Now it's like a full pot of... No, no, it's a full pot, yeah. Is there a reason why you have a toothpick here? Oh, it's because um, sometimes when I water them, the water doesn't go all the way down, so mm -hmm. I poke it from the bottom. Oh, okay. And, and, then, and then the water just goes down. Yeah. Is it a terracotta? It's yeah, a yeah, it's, okay. it's terracotta. Oh, but it's just a small hole, that's why. It's just very, very small hole, yeah. <laughs> And I see that you're also a terracotta lover. Yes, I love like terracotta. All yeah. these terracotta yeah. pots that are here. This is a hedgehog aloe. I want to say three years ago. Three years ago? Yeah, I think I bought it in Chinatown. Mm -hmm. And since then, it's gotten a lot of babies. Would you say this is like your oldest plant three it's, years ago? It's one of our oldest plants, yeah. And, you know, it, it had a lot of soil around it and it wasn't really doing anything since it got very leggy. So I planted some um, donkey tails on it. <laughs> to fill up the yeah, pot. Yeah, just to fill up the pot, but they haven't done much. <laughs> nice. Yeah, this is a Euphoria White Ghost. I think I, I, I actually found you in, in Union Square when I bought this one. Oh yeah, we yeah. were both at the we were there. Square market. It was like the coincidence, we didn't plan it. No, and then we bumped into And then I saw it and I'm like, yes, I have to get this. Yeah, and I didn't get it that day either, no. and you gave me a cutting. Yeah. It's actually not dead yet, but it's not, it's not dead. well. 
Like I tried putting it in water propagation, mm -hmm. which rotted it, and then I tried yeah. moss, which hasn't really done much either. But you gave it to me like six months ago. It's still doing like and pretty it's alive, well. Right? It's alive, it's yeah. Alive. Which is crazy because it has no roots whatsoever. I mean, if it dies, I can give you another one of these. <laughs> <laughs> and talk about this one. Oh my okay. god. Um, this one, Union Square again. <laughs> The steel, I think it was $30, and it was only, I think it was this tall, I think it was the same size. Yeah, it was the Same this size tall. as yours. Right. And that it had, um, I want to say it had two to three branches. Uh-huh. And of course, me being a me, I cut it you up. cut it up, yeah. <laughs> and now it has one, two, three, four. It has around five. Five plants in here? Yeah, five plants now. Wow, and this one is just like... And this one just exploded, up. yeah. Mine, I have the same thing and I got it around the same time, yeah. but mine is like still the same size, right. but the leaves are like ginormous, but it's not getting any higher. Right. Yeah, this was sold to us as the Florida ghost. So of course I was like, it's not white. <laughs> so I put it on, uh, I originally had this in the bedroom under grow lights. To try to make it more white. To try white, to make it more white. Which is but what I've been doing too. It didn't grow white, it just grew. <laughs> so this is more of a product of it being under grow lights. Than anything. And then I see here you have like five extendable moss poles here yeah. and moss. So the idea here is uh, at every node I wanted to put uh, some sphagnum moss to encourage uh, aerial roots so mm -hmm. I could attach to the pole. Also I wanted to um, spray only at the node and not at the at the leaf or the or the stem. If I wanted to fertilize it, I can fertilize it at each of the, of the oh, points. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. That's a good trick. Has it started catching on yet, or did you do this uh, recently? I did it recent, recently, but um, this one over here is holding on. But yeah. And there's a new leaf coming out yeah. here, too. This one's beautiful. I wish mine grew like this. It will with time. <laughs> <laughs> I actually began helping my parents and my grandmother water her plants and in 2012 I began my plant experience uh, I bought common plants snake plants uh, pothos uh, I was actually unemployed at that time I was going kind of crazy because I, I really had nothing to do except for look for look for work and it wasn't really you know panning out to anything so I began uh, you know taking care of plants and snake plants have always been one of my favorites. Now, I don't know all the names of them, mm -hmm. but they're very easy to take care of. And there are so many different varieties. I, I love them all. Yeah, I didn't even know there was so many. Is there one that you particularly like? Well, I actually have a couple. So we have a moonshine. Yes. I do know this one. It's a moonshine. <laughs> and. You s I see that the colors are very different from this one and this one. Is this one the old, the older one or the newer one? Well, it could be the amount of light it is receiving. Mm -hmm. It could just be uh, a genetic mm. thing, just a, a, a different variation. This is one of my favorites too because I just love this like silvery tone that it has. It's it's much lighter than um, other common snake plants. Mm -hmm. These ones that I've seen in the plant shops are usually a lot tinier. Did you get it at that size? Uh, yes, it was this size. Oh, wow. It has only grown uh, a little bit. A little bit. They're kind of slow growers. Yes. But... I have noticed that in the smaller ones. In the, in the larger ones, it grows a lot the more faster. common ones, they grow much faster mm -hmm. and taller. And this is another one that I like. It's very interesting. This is a copper snake plant. Yeah, that's and okay. it's it has ripples, and it's much harder. If, if you go ahead to, you know, touch it, it's, yeah. it's much harder. It's harder, and it has like a weird texture to it too. When I first brought this home, it did have more of a copper color, mm -hmm. and I believe over the past couple months, it has uh, slightly faded. Interesting. So it must be the the sunlight that it gets. Was this in the older apartment first, or no? So you just got this in yes. this apartment? Within the past maybe six months. Six months. Now as we go down here, we have, uh, again, I'm not sure of the name of this, but I bought this in Union Square uh -huh. at Petal Plants. Of course. And this one was given to us by you. Yes. 
by the nursery that you have here. Yeah, and actually this one I believe was uh, given hmm. to us by you. Yeah, that's another one I gave. Cause like snake plants are so easy to like propagate and just give to people. It has like so many babies. This one was like a night owl that had six babies in it. I just cut it up and gave you one of them. But it's grown a lot more since I last gave it to you. A little bit later, I'm going to show you a couple of them that are actually very easy to propagate. Um, mm. I have not had much luck propagating them myself, but there are a couple that I have. Mm. Now, this one was a whale fin that was also given to us by you, and it, oh. um, it has seemed to have grown much taller instead of, you know, wider. Yeah, it looks so different. I forgot I gave this to you. Because when I gave it to you, it was like a tiny one-leaf thing. Mm -hmm. These three here, uh, I believe they were imported. This one's similar to the other one that you showed, the, the form. And it grows from the center. It's much thicker. And it grows oh. outward. Yes. Yeah, it's a lot harder too. So you don't really water these that no. much at all. Most of like, like the common, like the standard ones, I guess you would say, those I water once a week. Like these ones. Uh -huh. Again, I'm not really sure which variety that is, but um, you know, this one I would water once a week. That is the shark fin, which came from Union Square as well, from Petal Plants. Uh -huh. That one has, uh, that one bloomed as, you know, it exploded right. rather quickly. And if we go over here, now this one on the end, again, I'm not sure the name of it, but this is one of the older ones that I had. This one I propagated very easily. Well, this one actually came from two other plants. And all I did was uh, you just, you cut it at the bottom and then put it in some water. I cut it at an angle and put it in water. I want to say after a couple weeks, you will start to see roots. Wow. And maybe after, I think there were a couple more weeks and I waited till they were a little bit longer mm -hmm. and I, I put them in a pot. Oh, you stick it back in to make it fun. I, I put it in, <laughs> in soil, yes. And if you're lucky, those roots in the water, you will start to, it'll start to grow another baby. Oh, yes. I've seen that before too. And that's actually why I like water propagation because you can see the roots forming, you can mm -hmm. see the babies forming. And I've had success with um, the snake plant. We have uh, pothos. Mm -hmm. Now this one, this is, this is also one of my oldest ones and one of my favorite. This plant came from, so the snake plant came from a deli. A deli? I bought it at a deli wow. in, in, um, in Brooklyn. That's and it was much smaller. It was $15. That's pretty good. Because I think this is a Bentel sensation and they usually go for a lot more. Can't believe he found this at a deli. Yeah. I want to say it was 15. It might have been 10. Uh-huh. But uh, still really good. Now one of these, I'm just going to bring this down. One of these is actually growing a baby. Oh. I believe this one right here, it fell out and I had to put it back in, but it has a baby growing on it already. Oh, you just stuck it back into I just kind of stuck it back in the best that I could. <laughs> That's what I love about snake plants. They're just so resilient. Now a couple of these that have sh that have grown up. This one is a little bit darker, and I'm not quite sure why there's that differentiation. That's interesting. Yeah, it doesn't have this variegation that it has on the older ones. And this just recently grew in this apartment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Maybe it's the lighting that you have because you have it um, more in the further corner of the room, away from the natural light. Maybe Perhaps. that's that's the reason why. They've always been tight like this uh-huh as opposed to more um wider. more open more wider hmm. i'm not really sure why maybe it's the water because then i imported a snake plant and it was really dehydrated and didn't have any roots and it was like a taco it was folded up for six <laughs> months and only recently i started to open up so maybe it's the water could be a thing and this one on the end i've had for about six months and that one also was a little bit smart and it exploded very quickly. It just like filled up the pot. It filled up the pot and it also grew much taller. Right. Uh, and snake plants, again, very easy to take care of. They've been my favorite. I can tell. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we named the Corgi Jungle because of our little Corgi here and our jungle of plants. Well, we got Peach when she was five months old and she grew up around plants. So she never really uh, questioned them because it was her first environment, I, I would say. So I, I guess she just saw it as part of the background. 
I mean, when, when we get new plants, she usually does sniff them, but that's about it. She, like, she doesn't try to nib on them or anything like that. So this quilt behind me, my mother made, and my mother, she quilts um, many different things. So she asked what we would like. We told her we would like something with corgis on it. <laughs> so she, uh, she made this, she made you know, three corgis, and then she put some plants up here because she knows that we like plants, <laughs> all right? She knows all about the jungle. And uh, also on the other side, let's turn this over. I love this. <laughs> The back is full of corgis. They're all, uh, you know, they're looking in different directions. They're smiling, uh, <laughs> and you know, we, we just love this. Here on the so window. So this one, I put more of the humidity-loving plants here because during the winter, I had my humidifier here. Mm -hmm. Right now, we don't really need it because during the summer, it's like 60 to. Yeah. Seventy percent humidity. So and it's like, been raining. Forever. Yeah, so I'm like, I don't think I need more humidity in this room. What is this? This. <laughs> I didn't see this last time. I think it was here last time, but it was. A, you got a billet tie? Yes. I don't remember you getting this. I told you. Yeah, what? so I got this on Etsy. It was two. It was a uh, two leaf cutting, oh. and I think I got it for like ninety dollars. Oh, that's Which not might bad. which might seem like a lot of money, but. Um, and I was a little uh, worried because it didn't have a new growth point or anything, but since then it it, it got a growth point. So uh -huh. I got that back in I want to say February. Really? I yeah. don't remember this. Yeah. And you have a living in moss for that extra humidity. Yeah, um, yes, I think it's more f to encourage uh, aerial roots on the top. Okay, so it's just yeah. like a dressing that you have yeah. here. But that one I I I also don't water that often. I water it like every two weeks. So you only water your plants when it shows like signs of dehydration? Yeah, but I don't get it, like I don't wait for it to be too extreme because then that's also bad. If it's showing a lot of stress, the roots might dry out and mm -hmm. then if you water it, the roots might then rot. So it, you kind of have to play around with it. Okay. I think mm -hmm. with more practice, you'll know when the plant actually needs water. Mm -hmm. Do you, would you say that you look at your plants all the time to kind of read the signs of what it yeah, needs? Yeah, I feel the leaves when it's been recently watered versus when it needs water. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what helps me the most. That's uh, Green Paradise, Paparizo Verde. This is one that we imported at the same time. Yes, we imported this one at the same time. I think it was... Back in October? Yeah. It was a, yeah, back in October of last year. Right, and I had this beautiful leaf yeah, we were so excited about. And I, and I think that one is the one that broke off. <laughs> that was the one that broke off. Yeah. We were like, oh my god. Yeah. But since then, I know you propagated a couple I times I propagated a, a lot of times. Because it was only two leaves. And then from those two leaves, I chopped off the bottom. <laughs> so then I had two plants. From those two, I think I gave you one. It grew a bit uh, taller, so I cut that again. Cut it again. So now I have two plants. He, he can just have like one node and he'll make a plant out Yeah, and see, this one is very easy to propagate. I propagated maybe this like two months ago? Two months ago. Or when was it that I gave it to you? I think it was two months yeah. ago. Yeah, and I think it already has a new growth point right here. Actually, I just snapped the one that you gave <laughs> me and it's already growing more aerial roots. Like it triggered really, it yeah. to grow more aerial roots. Maybe I'll cut it too. This plant is really resilient. I don't know why it's so expensive. <laughs> I think it's just a variegation. Everyone's like, it looks exotic. And it, like the demand is high. Right. This is another variegated plant. This is a ring of fire, right? Mm -hmm. The first one I bought rotted completely because it didn't have any aerial roots. Mm -hmm. I think it was just recently imported and they just stuck it in soil. And of course, the roots were gonna rot. And they gave me another one. This one was better, but it still lost a lot of the leaves. I think this was the only original leaf that it had. So by the time you had it, it was only one leaf. Yeah. That's the thing with imported plants. Like it takes a long time to acclimate. Right. And that's why I think most of them are so expensive because once they get imported, people need to acclimate Right, and it. you also have to kind of baby them. But this is growing nicely for you. It's finally growing nicely, yeah. yeah. Like three new, four new leaves. It's finally one. established the year after. <laughs> so this is, uh, I think we bought this planter from a ceramic shop in Mexico. They, they, they have a lot of really cute uh, planters. 
And we tried to order them, uh, order from them again, but they were just like, no, we don't ship there anymore. Oh, they don't ship internationally. <laughs> no. They don't ship internationally. What a shame. This is yeah. such a cute planter. And the plant in here, I think it's a copper spoon. So this was also another import. I think it came from Indonesia. And this actually was really surprising that it was an import because it came in like almost perfect condition. Mm. That's the thing with imports. Like yeah. sometimes it's a risk. You don't know. It had it's uh, these two leaves and I think it had, this one was emerging. And since then, I think it's had two new leaves, so. So it didn't even really need to acclimate. It didn't really need well. to acclimate. I put it in soil right away. Yeah, I, I don't know why it's expensive. I, I didn't get this for a lot of money. I think I got this for $80. Oh. With the shipping and everything. So this versus what they- what we get in the States. It, it states. <laughs> I think this one sells for like three, three, three dollars for wow. like a slightly bigger one, but. That's crazy. Something like this in the States would be at least 250. This is a Hindu rope, uh, Hindu rope variegata. Variegata with like yes. the white variegation. Yeah. It's I, so interesting. Why is this all white here? And this is like mostly green. Yeah, so I think three of these, because there's a couple of, of plants in there. So three of them I bought from Nelly's in Brooklyn. And then I think the longer one I got from uh, Rose with Hose. Yeah. And it wasn't that expensive either. I think, I think they're becoming a lot more common. Mm -hmm. The thing with these is it takes forever to grow. I have yeah, one. So, so if you buy one, it's better to buy a, like a, a, long a longer one. one. Yeah. It's worth the money. It's worth the money. Because it might take a couple of years to get that <laughs> length and the yeah. others. Mine is still looking like this. Yeah. It has a little stub. I remember <laughs> I wanted to give it to you, but it doesn't grow. But this is really cool how this is all white here. Yeah, and those love light. Now, what is this? That is a um, philodendron 6968 <laughs> something 9, I think. Is this your most recent plant purchase? <laughs> no. <laughs> no? Wait, I, you talked about this like. Oh. I think I got this at the same time I got that. This is beautiful. That is a uh, silver sword narrow form. Oh, this is growing a lot for you. Yeah, I, I got it from uh, Steve's leaves. I got it, I think it was just these, these three leaves. And of course I was greedy and I chopped it up. <laughs> <laughs> you gave me a cutting too. Yeah, I think I gave you a cutting. <laughs> and, and now and now I have a couple of vines and I'm gonna grow it out as a, as a hanging pot. Mm. But you also have like bamboo stakes in them? I'm hoping to just tie them onto the bamboo and just let them curl up. And then when they're up, I'll probably cut them again. Cut them again. <laughs> well, I actually met Caesar first. So we were both in the same studio for first year in architecture school. And the rest is history. We, we just got to know each other. And then when we graduated, we actually bought each other at the Union Square Market. And that's when we started talking again and realized that we both had a passion for plants. And then it just went on from there. Naturally, I also met Dennis. Well, as I mentioned in a lot of my videos, I do a lot of plant swap with Corgi Jungle. Like a lot of plants that we have, we just like to exchange them because it's a great way to add to each other's collection. We basically have like 50% of each other's collection and you know, the cost of getting there was a lot lower. And then over here you have more plant shelves. These are more common plants, more low light plants, obviously because uh, direct sunlight does, comes here mostly in the afternoon after like maybe one or two and this is very, I would say this is low light to medium light. During the summer it's, it might be a little brighter but during the winter it gets almost no light. But it gets a lot of diffuse light though. So this is philodendron... Mykins? Mykins. I think you gave me a cutting of this. Yes, I did. I think it's one of these actually. One of the vining ones? Yeah, one of the vining ones and then I... I bought another one just to fill it out. I like how you like lead them towards the wall. Yeah. Like you want them to climb. Hopefully they, they climb up the wall, but... These are pretty fast growers. I'm pretty yeah. sure they'll do that. And then on top you have like the, another philodendron. Philodendron Brazil. Those are very common. I kind of like the non variegated version, to be honest. It gives it more of a... I don't know, like a jungle feeling. I love how you put snakes in them just to make them all grow up. Yeah, because uh, I mean, I could make moth poles for them, but they're not really going to attach to the dry moths because I'm not going to be spraying, spraying them down. Them all the time. Down. Yeah. 
Mothballs are really high maintenance. They're very high maintenance and yeah. half the time they don't really work. Right. For me, for the Florida Beauty that I use, mm -hmm. I have to spray that thing like every day. And it, that's when it started getting arrow roots. Other than that, like it really does nothing but support for it. I think the good mothballs that they have are the plastic ones that wrap around like a tube. And then they stick like coco coir, sphagnum moss, and then they water it from the top. Oh, that I way, seen that, one before. that way, the the mixture inside the moss gets wet, and it also waters the plant. Is this another ring of fire? This is the non-variegated one. Oh. I think this is the more common one. I've never seen this one actually. Yeah. I only heard of the ring of fire one. I think this is called the jungle boogie, oh, something like that. Yeah. yeah. I like this one too. Yeah. The form's really nice. I think when it gets more mature, it'll get the saw. It grows as a vine, but it's very, like the, the notes are very close together. These are part of the peperomas that almost died. You put them on the other yeah, side. Yeah, I put them on the other side. They got really burnt. Well, not really burnt, but they turned really yellow like this. So I chopped it up. I propagated them. Now I have, uh, I think double of what I had before. But I think these two are the only ones that survived. This one and this one. There, these are the teardrop pepperoni. The, yeah, this is the teardrop. This is uh, Incana. Oh, the fuzzy one. Yeah, the, the fuzzy one. Yeah. I'm glad you were able to keep this one alive. Yeah. I haven't seen these in pot shops that much. I actually got this a long time ago. I got it in like 2018. Oh, okay. It was a lot bigger, but of course it. I see you have a model here. Oh God. Let's talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> I, this is, were you this? in the were you in Frank Lloyd Wright? I was in the same studio as me. And with Fran. Yes, yes. Right? Yeah, yes. I remember this. This was the, the suspended one. I think this is the only model I have left. Mm -hmm. The slats. Yeah, the slats. The famous slats. I actually really liked making that model. Yeah, I remember. I, I think that's the only reason why I kept it. I remember your model was like an exploded mm -hmm. exonometric of it. Little memories of school. Little memories. So this is the bathroom. Wow, it's amazing. I think this is one of my favorite rooms. I think my favorite part is the bathroom just because of the amount of light that comes in. And also it just feels very nice and soothing because for me, the bathroom is like a very sacred place. So to have it filled with plants and so much light, it was just one of my favorite parts of the place. There's like a plastic film, a privacy film on it. Mm -hmm. And it just makes the room very bright with diffuse light. Right, so like you still get the south facing light, but you just don't get the harsh light. Exactly, light. there's no direct light coming in. And I'm sure the plants love it in here. It's like the bathroom, so you yeah. get high humidity. High humidity with nice bright And nice light. light. Yeah. Talk about this. Okay, so this is our propagation station. Perfect for you. Yes, because we love to cut and share <laughs> plants. Uh, I like propagating because it's an easy way of expanding your plant collection without spending any money. And there are plants that you already have, so why not? And I like propagating in water, and then once the water roots get into a good enough length, then I transfer them to uh, soil. So this is a wandering Jew, I think mm -hmm. that's what it's called. These uh, propagate really easily. They they root within a few days because I think this is, has only been in here for like two days. And, and it's already rooting It's that already much. rooting, yeah. It's like one inch of roots already. Yeah. I think this is a string of beans? Is oh, that what it's called? Is it? Yeah. I've never heard of that one. Yeah. It's also rooting already. Yeah, it's, a, it's rooting. This is a peperomia, this is a scandens. This is a snake plant. It kind of looks like a dinosaur tube or something. Yeah, it looks like a tube. This is melanocrysum. Oh, this is the first half that you took yeah, off. Yeah, this is the top part that, that had uh, spider mites. Mm -hmm. You can see the damage here. Mm -hmm. If there's aerial roots, I prefer sphagnum moss. But if there's just a tiny node that doesn't really, you know, really have any real roots, mm -hmm. I like to uh, put it in water. And then once it has a little bit of roots, then I put it into moss. And then it could root and then it'll stay in the medium that I'm going to you know, grow it in. So you just like to keep it in that medium if it does well, right? Yeah. I try not to change so many mediums because it's 
it's a lot of stress for the plant. Because if you do it from water, you're not unless you're doing it in Lekka, mm -hmm. I don't think you would want to keep it in there for too long. Because then the majority of the roots are water roots. And then when nice. you put it in soil, it might have a higher possibility of rot. So moving on, this is uh, Epipernum Cebu Blue. Mm, yes. These look a lot different when they're matured, right? Yeah, they kind of uh, have illustrations almost like a a um, Ansera and Asonia. But right now it has like a very, I would say a, a tint of like aqua blue. Yeah, I see it. Like a combination of like green and blue. Kind of like the Silver Sword. Yes, yeah, very similar mm -hmm. to the Silver Sword. You have this like cascading effect with your planters. Oh uh, yes, mainly because when you stand up, you you don't want to hit your head. So, <laughs> um, you know, I'm not really sure what kind of hoya this is, but this is a hoya. It's more of a a thinner leaf hoya. Oh, I think this is the multiflora. Maybe. Maybe. This is uh, another hoya. Hoya ovana. I had this really close to the window, and it turned like a lime green. That's why I moved it back back here where there isn't that much uh, light. And hopefully it starts to uh, get greener leaves. That's what happened to mine too. I didn't have a filter and I had it in a south facing yeah. window and it just had the leaves were a lot lighter like this. But once I pulled it back, the leaves were normal again. But I see some new growth over there. Yeah, there's actually a, a, a bit of new growth. And I think a lot of it is turning back to a darker green. Right. Oh, they're so cute. This here. There's more growth somewhere. I find that the Hoya Obobata yeah. is like very forgiving. Yeah, it's very easy to take care of. Yeah, so I feel too fine. Yeah, and like the bathroom, I, uh, I kind of went with a more mono, mono color, mm. just uh, gray and white pots. I like how you did that because it matches the tile that you have, which I really love. <laughs> <laughs> And here you're using like the same kind of design with the pots being on like the sill. Yeah, because I, I altered them taking into account that it's going to grow maybe a bit up. They're also very versatile in that, you know, if a plant doesn't do well, it's very easy to pick it up and put it somewhere else. You just need the same size pot yeah, basically. I, yeah, I mean, this it's a four inch ring. Mm -hmm. So most of the four inch pots fit in there. This is a vanilla orchid. I've had this for a pretty long time. It's, it's very easy to propagate again. I've cut this plant more so many times. <laughs> and it grows very easily. Mm -hmm. And it's like loving it. Look at and this area. It, yeah. It's crazy. It, it especially loves it in the bathroom because after every shower, there's there's a bit of moisture in the air. And it just grabs onto yeah. it. And this is the string of hearts. Yes, it's the, the, the variegated string of hearts, yeah. This is the one that you kept. Yes, it's the one I kept. And with the sun, it, it gets a little sun stress, so, so it gets a little pinker than, than it would normally get. Yes, like this is a lot pinker than the ones that I have at home. They're also like very tiny and cute. Yeah, I don't know why they're so tiny, but... Maybe it's a nutrient thing, because once I put mm. like um, the Dynagrow Pro in my water, it started getting bigger leaves. Yeah, I, I don't fertilize. <laughs> Wait, wait, you want the liquid? The I, I'm, I'm going to start using it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So hopefully once I start using it, the leaves might get a little bigger. It's okay. Yes, Peach? Is it bath time? No, she hears the dogs. Oh, I'm like, you want to get a bath time? So yeah, in, in this wall, I put a lot of a lot of plants that might sun stress. Like this one, this That's is the uh, Hoya Sunrise. So that one turns red once it gets a lot of light. And it's already starting to do that right here. Yeah, the original picture that the seller sent us, it was like really bright Way red. red. Yeah. And then when we got the plan, it was like green. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully it turns red. Yeah, hopefully. Because it was so deceiving. I yeah, it was very deceiving because it, it also looped around. Right, and this looks completely different. Yeah. <laughs> And this one is another This one video. I think turns orange. This one has that orangey tint to it already. Yeah. So it's so it's starting to get the orange tint. That is a white ghost. A philodendron white ghost. Hi. Yeah, I was very disappointed because the one that we have in the living room was sold to us as a, as a philodendron white ghost. But it doesn't do this. But it doesn't turn uh, white. So I got a, a smaller plant that I know already has that uh, 
that quality to it. And you have this like pole you wanted to climb on. Yeah, it, I'm very ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it goes up that pole one day. Give it high expectations. Yeah, because if you just give it a small pole and within a few months, I mean, you have to replace the pole. Right. It's better just to give it a pole, yeah. <laughs> booby cactus. Yes, it's a booby cactus. It was actually pretty affordable. I think I got it for $30. Mm, that's yeah, a $30, good price. yeah. It came bare root and it almost had no roots, but it rooted very quickly when I put it in water. Oh, so you put this in water. Yeah, I put it in water before because I had almost no roots. Okay, so I should have done that because I got the same thing bare rooted and it was a lot bigger, but I just put it straight into soil and it went into shock and the oh. the boobies, the boobies on top started <laughs> they like deflated and oh, then they no. slowly like, you know, ripped off. <laughs> but like, Afterwards, I started spraying the soil more because I'm like, oh, it's a cactus, it needs less water. But after I sprayed it with more water, the roots start mm -hmm. forming, and that's when it started inflating again. And actually, the growth comes out of one of these like oh. booby points. Oh. It I don't comes know. out of the nipple. Yeah, it comes out of there, which is very interesting. I'll, I'll show you yeah. later. The one behind it is it's, it's actually a variegated version of the vanilla orchid. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is really pretty. And that's and that's the uh, the pod you you gifted us too. Oh, yay! Yeah. The housewarming gift. Yes. This is a very nice variegation. There's actually two different kinds. There's one that is mostly green and it has like a like a stripe of yellow variegation. Mm -hmm. I don't like that one as much. <laughs> you like this one? I like the one that's that, that's more I mean, defined. Kind of reminds me of the whale fin that I have. A little bit, yeah. It does. But uh, this is like a yeah. tiny version. That um. is a fishtail hoya. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually got it as just two leaves. Wow. This one again is very easy to propagate. I have no idea why it's so expensive. Because <laughs> from two leaves I was able to make three cuttings and then from those three cuttings I was able to make more cuttings. <laughs> oh my god, you're like master of cutting. I remember you texting me, you're like, should I cut this up? I'm and like, then yes. before I even responded, you cut it up already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's also very easy to take care of. It's very low maintenance. It's I low water it maybe once every two weeks. And you have moss dressing it yeah, on top moss. too? Yeah, moss. It's a pretty well draining soil too. Mm. And again, this one, I, I kind of feel the leaves, especially the, the bottom ones. If, if, it like, if it feels a bit flimsy, flimsy is like a paper like a piece of uh, printing paper. Then you know it needs water. Yeah, and, and if it's more like a cardstock type of paper, that's, it means that it's well watered. It doesn't need water. Yeah, now it feels like a cardstock. Yeah. You just watered this one, yeah. right? And oh. that's the pink princess you gifted us. <laughs> <laughs> it finally got a tiny bit of variegation. I know, yes. it's just such a drama queen. I think it just has really bad genetics at this point. Yeah, but I'm still hopeful. I, You're I, hopeful. Yeah. I think what is helping it is the moss that's around the stem. Mm. I think it really loves that. Hopefully that that sparks up more more variegation in the leaves. That's what I recently did too in my uh, video update of the Pink Princess. I just gave it a moss bowl to try to encourage more growth. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. I might I might chop it up. <laughs> Do it. I might chop it up to have more more chances of, of the variegation. Variegation, yeah. yeah. Definitely do it. What do you have back here? That is the uh, that is the most recent uh, plant purchase. <laughs> <laughs> that is the uh, philodendron jerry horn. Oh, it's yes. actually a very uncommon plant, mm -hmm. and that I think we wanted to get it from the same importer that we got the the other plants from. Right. But he was saying that it was going to be how much? Two thousand dollars. Yeah. Even if it was from Indonesia, so yeah. I'm like, I don't I'm like, think no, it's worth I'm it. I'm like, no, thank you. But it's a very uncommon plant, and I think I can propagate it <laughs> and hopefully get more uncommon plants from it. So you're about to start a plant shop in here with all these propagations. Hopefully one day. <laughs> yes, that's the dream plant that's shop. That's the dream. Because I'm trying to uh, get the leaves to be more like the mature, mature form, form, where it's like. Like literally two horns. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's where he gets his name from. Because I think this was a one leaf cutting and then it started growing and it started to lose the, the shape of the true, you know, of the true leaf. Right. It kind of looks like a baby Florida ghost yeah, without it does, yeah. the, the horns and all the different... I think the species, the, the cross, because it's a cross species, so they don't really know what two plants were crossed to make that one. But, I, but I'm pretty sure it's 
gonna be either like a flower ghost or something that looks like that. Mm, I can see it with the yeah, or maybe the pedatum without the mm -hmm. the red petioles. This right. kind of has that smooth petiole. I recently got the the variegated ovulvada. It was really affordable. I think it was only like twenty dollars. Oh, okay. And on Etsy, like if you get one, like one leaf of that is like fifty, sixty dollars. Wow. I mean, it's like really overpriced, but for no reason. For no reason. So when I saw this on on their stories, I'm like, yes, I have to go down there. And, get it. <laughs> uh -huh. and I think that one is an import. This one. Yes, and it's finally doing something. <laughs> Because for a very long time, I think that's uh, philodendron. Oh, mame. Mame, yeah. Yeah. And the the two leaves that it came with when it was imported died off, and this is the, the first leaf. Would you say this is like kind of like the silver sort, the silver pastatum that we have? I think this like is easier to take care of. This is easier. This is easier. I, I don't think I need as much humidity. But it was just like importing it was. Importing what it was a struggle, yeah. Because it's been almost a year. Right. And we're still kind of rehabbing them. Right. And you gave it like a, a stake too for it to grow on. Yeah, ho hopefully it grows it up. I mean, but... Give it expectations. Mm -hmm. And here we just have two plants. I mean, when they're pretty low light plants. It's a Pothos Enjoy uh -huh. and this is just a normal green leaf philodendron. Right. I think this is one of my favorites. I mean... This is the one you have outside too that yeah. you really like. This is my... Yeah. Because a lot of people like pothos, but I don't really like how pothos look because they look kind of, I don't know, they look really I don't know, kind of basic. <laughs> <laughs> but this one, I mean, like the leaves are a bit finer. They look like a more silky leaf. Oh, and yeah. like they're loving it here too. And like they're very, and it's a very common plant, so. Mm -hmm. The thing with um, philodendrons that trill is that they have this little piece that falls off oh, yeah, that yeah. pothos don't. Yeah. That kind of annoys me. But other than that, I really like philodendrons too. Yeah. And it seems to be loving heat here with the humidity. The leaves are like a lot bigger. The humidity and then when you shower, it just comes down. Yeah. yeah. You're going to be showering in a jungle yeah, in so. a year. <laughs> yeah. Kind of random question, but I see that you have like... <laughs> Fabric toilet paper? Yeah, so this... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just interested. <laughs> so this fabric uh, is for when you use the bidet. Oh. So the bidet, it cleans you. It cleans you. Not, no no messes. Uh -huh. And then you just basically dry yourself off with this. It's and then so eco-friendly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we try to do our best. I mean, we don't really use... When we shower, we only use uh, soap bars, no plastic bottles. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're trying to reduce as much waste as we can. Right, because I remember that was one of the things you were trying to yeah. do. So that's interesting. I've never seen like fabric toilet paper before. <laughs> I mean, think of it more of like a towel to dry yourself off with. But it fits in a compartment where normal paper would go. <laughs> so we started to think about sustainability when we, you know, took a look at our waste in our daily lives. Like things from shampoo bottles and single waste, uh, maybe plates when we had people over. And then once we started really looking at all our waste, we started to uh, first use what we had already because everything that you already have would be the most sustainable thing opposed to throwing all that out. We buy bamboo toothbrushes, something to think about. Our first toothbrush is still out there somewhere because Plastic never decomposes, it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. You know, look around what you already have, use that. And if you need something, you should do your research to see how that material has come to your door. Like, things just don't magically appear at your door. They, they take up a lot of resources. When she was a little baby, we used to get ba uh, weewee pads. Like those single-use weewee pads where she would go and then you would just throw it out. But then we found these reusable ones where she would go and then you would just put it in the, in, the, in the washer. And that worked really well. Now that she's a little older, she doesn't need them as much. Buying treats in bulk, like I know Petco used to have uh, a whole bunch of treats out like a, like a buffet and then you would just uh, t bring your own bag and then put them in, in the reusable bag and then purchase treats that way. She has a bamboo toothbrush as well. <laughs> Oh, for plants, uh, plants for being more sustainable, I want to stop using the, 
the potting soil because a lot of it has peat moss. So I want to do coco coir, uh, bark, and uh, some charcoal. It, compost is basically anything that you, uh, like food scraps, so let's say like an apple core, a banana peel, like things like that. Uh -huh. And usually when you throw it in the garbage, it gets compressed down. And since it's not getting enough oxygen, it emits uh, methane, which is a lot worse than carbon dioxide, which is why it's good to compost. Because in the compost, it doesn't release methane. It's just turned into more fertile soil. Right, that you can use yeah. for your plants. And as a plant person, I mean, you always have a lot of dead leaves right. that need to go in. So th these are a lot of dead leaves, as you can see. Things like broccoli and vegetable, we actually save. We boil that and then we make veggie broth. Mm. And then when that cools down, we put it in here. Oh wow, so you did, like use the very last bit of everything. Yeah, the very last bit of everything. Everything we can't eat, mm -hmm. anything that could break down. This is a worm compost, so you can't put any citrus, you can't put any onion. There's live worms in here, if you want to see them, I can show you. How does it work? Okay, so... First you put uh, a bedding. So it's anything like cocoa husk, even just a shred of papers. So you have that, you put worms, and then you slowly put uh, food as they eat it. Mm. And then the more food that you put in, the like they produce a lot of poop, and then that poop is really fertile. That's the worm castings. The worm castings, yes. And then I think maybe, I don't know how many months has it been since I put this in. I want to say like three, four months. Oh, it turns wow. into this. Oh wow. And it's these are actually a uh, worm. And this you use for your plants or you just... Right now, I the, 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 the castings I got from this, I actually used to uh, grow some peppers outdoors in our fire escape. <laughs> <laughs> Very resourceful, Very use resourceful. every single yeah. space. But now I think we have three more. Um, I mean, this is also a learning curve because we've run into a couple issues. One was, there was like little bugs. I wasn't really sure if they were good or bad. Uh -huh. But I found out they're, they're fine for the decomposing, for decomposing the food. But it's very unsightly to put on houseplants. <laughs> right, because you don't want any like... Right, yeah, plants. so for that you kind of have to find different ways of getting them out. Uh -huh. one, one of them is just putting like avocado things. And then these are like traps. There's actually no bugs in here. Oh, they're like traps There's like tiny, the tiny bit amount of bugs. Yeah, I see it. And then like you kind of rinse them out every single day. Oh, okay. Until there's no more, because the first time I did this, it was filled with it. But now there's only a few left. So. so it's actually getting rid of them. So it's, so it's working. I'm surprised that it actually doesn't smell bad. Yeah, like garbage. a lot of people would say, I mean, I don't want compost in my apartment because it's going to smell, there's bugs, whatever. Right. But this is pretty sealed. I mean, the cap goes on. There's no odor. Uh, there's no way of any pests going in from the bottom because I put a car piece of uh, cardboard in the bottom. So each layer is like a different layer of mm -hmm. compost. Right. So I think right now we only have three, and then there's just a, a folds, a folds bottom. Mm, okay. So whenever this is full, I'm just gonna take one from the bottom and put and it on top. And put it up. Yeah. I love how compact it is, and it's good for like an urban setting, and you mm -hmm. still want to compost. Right. So I bought this, this whole thing here, and then uh, you know I. I I wanted to put it here, but it was right next to the fire escape and it was kind of a fire hazard. Right. So what I did is I mounted it on, or I screwed it onto a, um, a trolley. Oh, you did with that. Wheels. Yeah. Oh, I thought it came with that. No, it did like. not come with that. <laughs> so th this is very easy to move around in case I need anything from the cat. Yeah. More people should definitely do this. Yeah. I mean, I would probably follow your footsteps and learn from what you did. You should make a YouTube if video about this. If you want worms, this. I have worms. All I need is worms? Yeah, all you need oh. is worms and a, you could make it out of like a plastic, a plastic container. Maybe I'll start with that, like a tiny baby step. Tiny and then just like add, add a little bit of food to it every, every once in a while. So let's go into our next room. I think in the bedroom we mostly just do propagations. It's like a science lab in here. Yeah, so this is our version of your ICU. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of grow lights a lot of uh, propagations. After we water propagate them, we put them in, in soil mm -hmm. in a plastic bag just 
for them to grow more roots. Do you air them out once? In yeah, a I, I try to air them out every single day. Oh, you got a rotunda flora. Yeah, I got it really cheap, but also there was no roots in them, so. And here you're using recycled. Yeah, these are just, uh, I think these are pudding containers. Mm. And I just drilled the holes in the bottom. I love how you just recycle and try to be eco-friendly. They're everything. very easy to just to, uh, you know, just drill holes. Right. And this is a really rigid plastic, so perfect. it's perfect for uh, propagations. Propagations, <laughs> especially bubble tea. Yes, I learned that from you. The bubble tea, like this one here. This is um. Silver pesticide. Oh, you got yeah, another yeah. cutting from it. Yeah, because it was long. It lost the original leaf that you gave me. Mm -hmm. That died off. So mm. there was an extra node. So I'm like, it doesn't need an extra node. I mean, I'm just gonna cut it off. <laughs> you just put it in. And so I'm, I, I put it in here. It has no roots, but it has a new leaf. New leaf. I just put mine in Lekka just to change it up because I had it oh, in okay. moss, and it wasn't really. I might try Lekka. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna try Lekka. Because you're kind of doing it here anyway, so you have some water sitting on the bottom. Yeah, I mean, it's just to keep it moist because I'm not going to be mm. here every single day watering it. Yeah, because for me, like moss <laughs> like dries out really quickly, yeah. so that helps. Are you growing your own moss too? No, I actually bought that for um, for a terrarium that I wanted to build. It, it actually grew a lot because it's been a while since I bought it and I haven't made it. but. And you just keep it in here? Yeah. This is live moss? And yeah, it's live moss. And it regenerates quite easily. Yeah, these are tiny little um, succulents. Succulents. I haven't really found a place for them yet mm -hmm. because I don't really have any windows that I want to receive full light. So I have them here for now. And it does well in the grow light. Um, kind of. Yeah. I mean, this one's stretching out like crazy. Oh. <laughs> so this very uh, <laughs> slender, uh, prickly pear. This one's flowering. Yeah. Maybe you could do like a whole landscape with it. I can see. Yeah, I, I might uh, pot them out together because I've noticed that if I have them individually like this, they're more likely to get neglected because mm. I'm not going to be watering every single one. Right. It's better to have them in a, like a big pot and just water that pot. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, philodendron subhestatum and we traded um, an epiprenum skeleton key with her hmm. for this and this actually has given us a lot of babies because i think she gave us this and it had like a little leaf that was this oh i didn't even notice there was like three of these over <laughs> and here and then i cut that off and then there was an offshoot of this oh my god and now we have a new we one we have a new here. one over there so now you have three plants this is good because i actually had this in the window and it completely burned <laughs> oh this is from the sun stress no, it, it completely burned. I'm, I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, it just burned. I'm pretty sure it's gonna die. <laughs> it's so beautiful, though. No, because I, I had it in the window because I've noticed that when it was in the window, it had a lot of really nice. Oh, the redness red back. came out. Yeah, and I guess it had a little too much light, mm -hmm. and it burnt out the chlorophyll, and that's why it's dying. Gotcha. And then so I, I guess think, this yeah. would be do well in the grow light. Yeah. When you get intense light. I think it might be better in the grow light, so. Because I have my Red Queen, which is similar with the, the back. Mm -hmm. And when I had it lower down on the shelf, it wasn't producing that redness. But once I put it back up on the highest yeah, shelf... I, yeah, I think it was like this. It has, yeah, that. Yeah, it was like this. It wasn't really red. And now it's doing this red for you. Yeah. And then when I put it closer to the window, it got... It got that red. It got that red, yeah. I like that. So it's a lot of trial and error. Yeah, that's with plants. What does it mean to have plants in your life and how has it impacted you? For me, it's self-care. At work, I have, uh, my, my office is full of plants. So it makes me feel good, it cleans the air, and a lot of my patients actually like plants. So for me, it's the self-care and wellness. Green space, and it's, that's something that makes me feel good. It's, and it's very important you know, during the pandemic and, and whether you're working from home or in the office, uh, you know, we're busy, it's stressful, um, you know, we tend to go out of our minds. So it's, it's very um, calming and important that we take care of ourselves. And that is one thing that I enjoy doing is taking care of my plants, not just at home, but at work. And for me, I think it's similar. I mean, it's, it's like me time where I can be with my own thoughts and kind of just you know, do my own thing with mindless work to kind of taking care of of other living things. I think that's 
I think that's why I enjoy it. <laughs>